The Elgin Maze is a teaching tool that I have developed and used for a broad range of students in economics. I have played the game with high school students being introduced to economics, but have also worked it into classes with advanced undergraduates in upper level electives. The game is incredibly simple to run, there are no high tech requirements, it is very low cost, and a wide variety of insights can be illuminated by the simple experiment. The game is inspired by Armin Elchin's 1950 JPE paper. The quick experiment provides an active learning environment and helps students acquire a deeper understanding of key concepts in economics. So how does the Elchin Maze game work? What you do is you take a series of index cards, put them in rows and columns on the ground, and on the underside of the cards, you have them marked. So you have them marked with either an, a go, that means you get to keep continuing on in the game, or an X or something that indicates that you have to stop and start over. You set up the game by first laying out the cards in some kind of pattern that has a series where you can keep going and somehow make it all the way through the maze. And then what you do is you ask for some volunteers to play the game. You get some students to come up, you start them on one side of the game, you explain the simple rules to them, and then you just let them go and provide them with some incentive for each time that they get through the maze. The students can go one spot at a time, either forward, sideways, backwards, diagonal, whatever they want. They get to move one spot at a time, and they're trying to get from the starting side to the finish side. So here's an example of the game in action. So to make sure that we understand the rules, we're gonna go through it one time, just the first step uh, real quick. So everybody's gonna to go to the first step. So you're just gonna to go to your one, and I'm gonna have uh, you pick up the, your, yours first, so A1. So he would look at his, and it says go. So he could keep going, right? You could look at yours, what would yours say? It would say go, so he could keep going. Hers says go, so she keeps going. He gets the X, right? So he has to put it back down where, you know, how it was, and now he's, he's out. So what did yours say? Yours was go, so you're still going. So they would have taken one turn. If it says go, you can keep moving from there. Once you're out at D, you can start wherever you want. So you don't have to start back at D and just continually lose, <laughs> right? Or if you get it right, you can start wherever you want from here on off, right? I just set you up so we could see that part of it, all right? All right, go ahead, take your turns, keep going. You can just all go at once. Just take your next steps. If you get over to me, you end up with a piece of candy. So you go ahead and look at it, you're going at your own rate. Tim, I'm sorry. Okay, well, this is unfortunate. Which one did you get out of this one? Dang it. Probably the best attribute of the Elchin Maze game is the flexibility of what you can do after the game. You can have a lecture or discussion on a variety of different topics. In the class shown, I provided a mini lecture on my favorite point to illuminate with the Elgin Maze, the role of the price system. Okay, so how did we get through the Elgin Maze? 
How does society create economic prosperity? Those two questions actually have very similar answers. In the game and in markets, it's the institutional setting of profit and loss, reward and punishment. That's what helps us figure out our way forward. In the real world, the economy is too complex and nuanced for us to figure out. Markets are so interconnected and constantly changing that the difficulty of arranging an economy's affairs creates a maze-like problem so massively complex that the cognitive burden required to solve it is beyond what we as humans can handle. It's the institutional setting, the price system, and the reliance on profit and loss that allows order to emerge and helps us find our way forward. Alternate versions of the game can be played. You can have with more people, fewer people, a bigger maze, whatever you'd like. But my favorite alternative game is the self-interest game. What I do is I take one or two people and I have them play for themselves, just as the normal Elgin maze game goes. But then what I do is I have one person who's the people's champ. They're playing for all the members in the audience. And if they get through the maze, instead of giving them one piece of candy, I throw candy out to everybody else out in the crowd. This allows for a discussion on self-interest versus selfish behavior that's frequently taught in principles classes or introductory economics classes. You can also use the standard game to teach theory of the firm in competitive markets. A small but important point about comparative advantage, that more variety is beneficial. You can use it to discuss the role of the entrepreneur in handling uncertainty and pushing markets forward. And finally, as many micro textbooks now feature chapters on behavioral economics, you could create an advanced discussion by using the game as a counterpoint to behavioral economics focus on rationality. Students can consider to what extent economic solutions come from individual rationality. There's so much you can do with this game, and it brings some active learning and fun to the classroom. I hope you find it as useful as I have.